It is December 13th, and today we're looking at a very French Santa Claus who led a very French life. Santa Claus! We came to see you, Santa Claus! We even flew in an airplane. You must be half frozen, my poor children. <laughs> oh man, I am gonna mess up so many names in this video. I apologize to anyone who speaks French. Born in Malbec in 1929, Armand Moffer was a French writer painter, and actor. He spent his childhood living on his parents' asparagus farm and attending school at Robillon. After graduating, he threw himself into the work of the farm, growing apples and asparagus, and also learning how to paint under the tutelage of Justin Gregor, who later introduced him to André Lotte. This led Mafra to make the move to Paris, where he continued to study painting at Lotte's Academy and also started acting in amateur theater productions. It was there on the amateur stage that he was discovered by Roger Planchon, who brought him to the professional theater where he played roles by Molière and Bertolt Brecht. In 1977, Mafra added author to his skills, publishing short stories, premiering plays, and becoming an award-winning novelist. As an actor, between 1961 and 1998, Mafra appeared in more than 50 television films, among them some of the most critically lauded French television productions of their time. Meanwhile, he continued writing plays, including Italian language adaptations of French theater and vice versa. And he also continued painting and found time to record readings of his original poetry. Santa Claus, wouldn't you be more comfortable if you took off that big heavy jacket? Take off my fur jacket, simply it isn't done. Imagine Santa in shirt sleeves. <laughs> You're right, I must say I hadn't thought of that. But it is kind of a special emergency. A Santa Claus special emergency simply don't exist. Why did I include the French title in my script? Released in 1984, Jairon Contre la Père Noël, also known by the English titles I Met Father Christmas, and I Believe in Santa Claus, was directed by famed French comedy director Christian Gion. The movie was originally developed as a vehicle for French pop chanteuse Karen Cheryl, who plays a double role as the children's teacher and as a magical fairy who helps Santa Claus in his workshop. The movie is a science fiction and fantasy musical that was intended for both French and English audiences, illustrated in part by the fact that Cheryl recorded her songs for the show in English. However, the original pressing of the soundtrack had to be recalled and destroyed. It appears that although this show was created with her in mind, Karen Cheryl neglected to get her record label's permission to even appear in the movie, let alone record songs for the soundtrack. The soundtrack would be reissued with new vocals by Tilda Rejuan, and in the Quebec release, Cheryl's voice would be overdubbed by Natalie Simard. The movie also features Dominique Houlin, who plays the dual role of a surly school janitor and a child-eating ogre in the forest. Hulan is mostly recognized by American audiences for his guest appearances on action series such as William Tell, Relic Hunter, and Highlander the series. Elodie Perra, 28, Rue de Las, and so forth and so forth. Six and a half years old, well-behaved at home, works well at school, asked for a doll for Christmas. Fine. An excellent record. Except for two or three little minor incidents, you've been a very good little girl all year long. Mafra's Santa is on a much smaller scale than most of the Santas on this list. He's a little less boisterous, a little less demonstrative about his jolliness. Although he clearly does love his work, he also lives more simply and more plainly than most of the Santas on the list. In fact, his whole operation is much smaller than you would expect an international magical toy manufacturing and distribution concern to be. While much of the typical demonstrations of Santa's mirth are missing from Mafra's performance, he nevertheless exudes an important part of the character of Santa comfort. Rescuing children from the cold, taking mystical side trips into war zones in order to help out the children's parents. This Santa is a Santa who focuses on comforting the afflicted, which is a very interesting way to think about Santa, 
when you re-envision Santa with that as the core of his character, his toys become more than just playthings. They become the primary form of a source of necessary comfort in a world that is sometimes chaotic. And yes, this is another Rift Track Santa, guys. You can find their take on this Santa through their website. In fact, on the Rift Track site, you can even buy a copy of this movie, Unrift. You can see it in its original form. The movie itself is a little bit wild and on the unpredictable side. What do you think about this version of Santa? Drop into the comments below and let me know. I'm eager to see what you think. And while you're down there, the like and subscribe buttons are there if you haven't hit them yet. There's also a share button so you can spread the video around. And a bell that you can ring in order to get notifications every time there's a new Santa advent calendar. Until next time, I am Glenn Williams, the film optimist, and you need to watch like it means something. And take care of yourself, because I'm not there to take care of you.